So looks like James Webb Space Telescope finally achieved it. We finally have images from all four giant planets in a solar system, with all the data now collected and ready to be analyzed. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today let's start with what was just released by the team processing all of the data from the James Webb. Well, it actually started with this, an intriguing picture of Saturn, but in this case, an image that was still not processed, an image that is still kind of difficult to understand. This is essentially the raw data that you can technically even download yourself, because all of this is publicly available. But it didn't take very long before the first images that were processed started to appear as well, with this one I think being the best so far. And this is Saturn, visible in the infrared frequencies, with other images focusing on other details, revealing more things that were invisible previously. Which of course means that we now have all four planets imaged in the infrared and investigated by the James Webb. It took just over a year to get all of this, but it's probably going to take a few months before all of the studies that were focusing on all of this data are going to start coming out with all of the new findings from all of this huge amounts of data. And so at least for now we get these beautiful images showing us these four planets like we've never seen them before. Intriguingly though, as you can see, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus seem to contain easily visible rings. Jupiter though does not. And that's because the rings here are a little bit more difficult to see, predominantly because they're made out of slightly different material. Although if you want to learn more about this and you want to learn more about Jupiter, Neptune and Uranus and all of the discoveries made so far, check out all of the previous videos in the description below. Nevertheless, from all of these four images, we definitely get to see these planets in a way we've never seen them before. For example, for Jupiter, we seem to observe these permanent aurora that are generally invisible in optical wavelengths but are definitely visible in higher frequencies or in the infrared. With the rings also generally invisible in the optical light, but once again visible with infrared frequencies. When it comes to Neptune, which is the farthest of these planets, this is probably the most detailed image we have ever since the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989. And here I think it's the rings that are probably the most exciting, as well as tiny moons visible inside the rings as well. Here's the annotated version of this and, as you can see, one of the brightest objects is the large moon Triton, the moon that's potentially extremely similar to objects like Pluto. But we also get to see other six moons, with seven other moons invisible in these images. But the other intriguing part is of course these unusual bright spots in the atmosphere. These are very likely active storms and seems to suggest an active global atmospheric circulation present on this planet. This can be barely seen with optical light or with telescopes like Hubble, and some of the previous discoveries from Hubble have actually created more mysteries than answers. Here though, we might be able to get some closure once the scientists figure out how this atmosphere works. And then of course we got these strange images from Uranus, the planet that's, as you can see, completely on its side. But once again here it's the rings that seem to take precedence. They seem to be very well ordered and create these very beautiful unusual patterns. And as we've recently learned from studies on Saturn, Rings in general can be used to study the atmosphere of the planet and to even discover unusual anomalies inside the atmosphere by looking at various variations and patterns formed inside the rings. I'm sure the studies about this are going to come out possibly in the near future. And so this beautiful image reveals 11 out of 13 different structures present inside this beautiful ring system. But once again, an unusual brightening that seems to be very close to the polar cap. And though it's kind of similar to what we saw in Neptune, here it's much bigger and its origins are currently unknown. But the most intriguing thing about both Uranus and Neptune is that despite similarities, in infrared light they do seem to have very different colors. Here's by the way the zoomed out version showing us some of the moons as well. And so it's the coloration here that seems to be a bit of a mystery. Generally the scientists believe they do contain similar materials, but the properties in their atmospheres seem to be different enough to produce different visual effects. What's exactly happening here is of course not something anyone can answer right now. And now we have our fourth addition, Saturn. And this one I think is probably the most unusual and the most unexpected. Here's of course what Saturn looked like before, with images taken by the Hubble telescope in optical light. And one prominent feature that's definitely visible in the optical light are these unusual stripes visible on the surface. But these features disappear in the infrared light. And because infrared temperatures generally show us heat or thermal properties, it sort of suggests that the temperature here is more or less the same, with what seems to be polar regions that are once again slightly different in color. I actually thought that this image from practically 20 years ago 
presents us with a very interesting contrast. Here you can see the visible light, the ultraviolet observations, but also some of the first observations in the infrared. This was by the Hubble telescope as well. And here, the stripes were still kind of visible, but this was in different frequencies. Because James Webb is able to see much deeper in the infrared light, and because it's not showing us any optical observations, all of these unusual stripes completely disappear because of methane-rich upper atmosphere that pretty much blocks all of the clouds underneath, and thus obviously blocks the heat as well. But we do see some kind of an unusual dark shape visible in the northern hemisphere that's possibly created by some kind of aerosols present way above methane clouds. But it's still kind of surprising how different it looks from Jupiter. First of all, no aurora visible whatsoever, and second of all, no unusual storm-like features, or really any features, that we do see in optical light, but that are pretty much absent here. But unlike the atmosphere, the rings are definitely very easily visible, along with several moons. And it's really intriguing how it's the rings that seem to be the brightest objects in this entire image, much, much brighter than the planet itself. And so in this annotated image, you can definitely tell apart the dark C ring, the very bright B ring, the Cassini division, the somewhat bright A ring, and the unusual Anki gap that ends with the F ring at the end. But because this is just the first image, we still don't get to see the other rings that should be visible on the outskirts as well. As a matter of fact, the G ring that should be visible seems to be absent, as well as the large diffuse E ring that is believed to be produced entirely by the moon Enceladus that you see right there. And that's of course the other major discovery coming from the system in the last few months. A major discovery coming from Enceladus itself. The strange, mysterious and very exciting moon that you see right there. Once again, the center of the E ring. This by itself is clear evidence that it's creating the entire structure. And so as we've known for many years now, Enceladus has these very large emissions that as we've recently discussed, don't seem to be geysers or even volcanoes, but instead seem to be a result of very violent sudden evaporation as the liquid water from within is exposed to outer space. And this of course ends up extracting a lot of materials from within the internal ocean and releases it into the rest of the Saturn system. And intriguingly, unlike other objects in the solar system that have a lot of water and extremely large oceans within them, Enceladus doesn't actually have that much, at least by mass, but it seems to be approximately 14% liquid water, making this one of the most water-enriched moons or really any objects in the entire solar system. But it still very likely contains a really large rocky body inside of it, which is probably made out of some kind of a carbonaceous chondritic rock, potentially similar to various asteroids that orbit everywhere in the solar system. And because of the tidal interactions with Saturn and with other moons, there's basically a lot of mixing and a lot of sloshing of this relatively small ocean with lots of different organic molecules present inside this unusual core, with many of these molecules then making it to the surface and eventually being expelled through these unusual jets produced by the moon. And extremely recently the scientists identified something nobody expected. Phosphates. The same stuff that our DNA and RNA are made from, and also the same stuff that our whole body uses for energy. And of all possible molecular discoveries, so far this is actually one of the most exciting ones. Mostly because finding phosphates in an ocean on an alien world dramatically increases the chance that we might discover some kind of a strange, unusual life. But more importantly, organic life. Life similar to planet Earth. And more importantly, the chance of this happening on Enceladus has now increased dramatically because all six important elements of life, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur, have also been discovered here as well. This moon seems to contain everything you would need to create primitive life. And with the discovery of sodium phosphates, it's basically now all about just going there and trying to see if there's anything present in those oceans underneath the ice caps. Although the only way we could probably ever come here is by using some kind of an advanced rover that can dig through all of this ice and then explore the ocean. Intriguingly, NASA and JPL is currently testing such rover right here in California mountains. And this is really cool because it's basically some kind of a snake-like object that's able to move on the surface, but also able to dig deep into the ground. You can learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos in the description, but in essence this is, maybe, the future of Enceladus mission. A somewhat strange, unusual, but somewhat effective, snake-like object that's able to explore the oceans underneath. And because it's already been tested successfully here on Earth, it's now just a matter of time before all of this can be planned officially and launched sometime in the future 
in order to explore this unusual moon. I think this image right here represents this really well. If successful, this would be the most exciting mission ever and potentially make incredible discoveries underneath. But all of this was really made because of these observations inside the E-ring made with the James Webb Space Telescope. And so now we have really good reasons to try to go there and to potentially finally have an answer for is there life out there outside of planet Earth? Because at the moment, Enceladus is definitely that one location that seems to show the most signs. But if the life here doesn't exist, and also if the other exciting moon, Titan, reveals no signs of life either, well, that's when we have to start asking bigger questions. Is life just very unique and extremely rare? But these are of course just first observations of this beautiful system and the first images coming out of James Webb. Here, the northern hemisphere is actually currently reaching the end of its seven-year-long summer, and so the images will probably change in color and look very different in the next few years. Which, by the way, might help us answer what's actually happening right here in the northern region. And so until these future discoveries, and until future observations from the James Webb, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, check out previous videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.